Well, today, guys, I just got off of work. It's really windy, so putting the boat in the water is not even an option. I mean, it's like really windy. But what I am doing is I'm reliving childhood memories. These houses right here behind me are the houses I grew up in on the weekends coming down to the lake. And um, used to be some of the best crappie fishing around. And I figured I got a hold of the owners. Luckily, the new owners are lifelong friends of my family. And um, they happened to buy the house. I was too young to even consider buying a house at that age. I think I was maybe 13 or 14, maybe 15. And, uh, but it is cool that I was able to still be in touch with those guys. I called them, asked them if I could come down, fish on the dock, shoot a video. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about some of, uh, some of my experiences growing up here on this dock. Now, as you can see, it's a rather big dock. Originally, it was just the two slips here. They added on that. But, but other than that, this is the dock that I got addicted to fishing on. You know, I always loved fishing since I was a really little kid. But this place here has a soft spot in my heart. And uh, we'll see if I can't catch some crappie on it. And we'll go from there. Now as you guys can tell the lake is way down right now. You can see where the white lines on there. But this pillar right here that holds up this walkway, this was the spot that I caught my first walleye. And I think I was maybe eight or nine years old. And I learned really fast that not all fish in Lake of the Ozarks are the same. I reached down there, you know, I caught bass, and I just reached down there and tried to lip it. Yeah, he got me pretty good. So that's when I found out while I have teeth, don't mess with them the wrong way. And that uh, little pier right there with the pelican on it, I don't know how many large bass I've caught off of that. When I was a little kid, just coming down here, every opportunity I could to fish, I'd be down here. I got grounded because I fished too much. I didn't want to eat, so they grounded me. So, that right here, probably one of the best spots I've ever remember fishing. Just right off of that little pier, and right off this pillar. So many big fish caught here. It's just, uh, you know, everybody wants to know a backstory. You know, you read books, you like to know about the characters, see a movie, you want to know about the characters. Well, I've had a few people wonder how I got into fishing and why it's stuck to me so much. Well, this place here is part of the reason I love fishing so much. look at that view. I mean that view is gorgeous. I don't know how many, how many weekends I spent standing right here with the catfish lying out in the water, swimming, just enjoying. I mean as far as childhood memories go, if you have kids and you have a lake house, get down here as much as you can. Because after they're about 16 and start being responsible and doing their own thing, this is where memories are made. I mean, it's amazing. So pretty. Well, I've been fishing around the dock for about 30 minutes now. Haven't had one single uh, salad bite. I had one little nibble, but that was it. Wasn't enough to say that there were fish there. I kept fishing it. Didn't catch anything. But what I would like to talk about is what I fish um, as far as how I set up my line and my lure. I generally throw a curly tail grub. Um, I just think it creates a little bit more action, especially on these colder days when it doesn't take much. You just got to move it up and down, and that little tail twirls. Um, then I run a leader. Usually it's a four foot, three to four foot fluorocarbon leader, anywhere between four to six pound. Uh, if I'm going to be fishing like thick stuff, you know, like big trees, I might go to eight, but you really don't need it. You're fishing for crappie. If you hook a bass and it breaks you off, well, you know, that, that's a bummer, but you know you're out here for crappie and I always run it to braid you know braid is overkill when you're going to crappie fishing um, there's really no need to throw braid straight to your line uh, you can well, the problem is when you get hung up 
you're going to bring that whole brush pile with you when you hang up. So I tie it to 10 pound braid. I usually use 4 to 6 liter and then 10 pound braid. That way you have that extra sensitivity if you get down really deep, you know, start fishing 25, 30 foot deep, that fish grabs it. The, the stretch in the fluorocarbon, since it is such a small diameter, there's a little bit of stretch there and then it adds to the sensitivity because it's low stretch, but then the braid, when you get that bite on braid, you feel everything. So when you get that bite at 35 foot deep, you know you got bit and you can set the hook. So if you're an avid crappie fisherman, try throwing braid with about like a four foot leader. You may end up feeling a little bit more sensitivity at those deeper depths, but if you're just a casual crappie fisherman, you're fishing in you know, anywhere from 20 foot or less, you can throw straight mono or fluorocarbon. Um, I just feel that fluorocarbon is a little bit more sensitive, so if you want to feel those extra bites with a good rod and good line, you can usually catch more fish. So, anyways guys, that's a trip down my memory lane. Um, just fish weren't biting today. So, I had fun though. I fished around the dock. It's been a long time since I've been here. So, you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you on the water next time.